following from the last week, we are reading one more story from an army base in Korea. Tucked away in the mountainous terrain, an army base is haunted by a mysterious apparition, and soldiers serving in the base are getting terrified and confused, facing the presence they cannot fight off. As with any stories from the military in the past episodes, the claustrophobic nature of military bases and the rigidity of hierarchy add to the terror and frustration. It's a long and elaborate story, as the original poster claims it to be written in a novel style based on his own experience. As usual, enjoy it with an open mind, but with a pinch of salt. So here's a story about a haunted army base. As always, handpicked, translated, and narrated by host Anthony. The army base I served for was tucked away in the mountain. There was not a single civilian house within the three-kilometer radius outside the base, and especially at night. One could not hear any sound human should produce, just night birds, winds, and insects. It was the first night I took watch duty at the base gate after I became private first class. My senior partner of the night was Sergeant Kim, with no artificial light as far as eyes can see. Everything was in the pale blue light of the nearly full moon. Hey. Do you see that abandoned house over there? Sergeant Kim said abruptly. Indeed, just about fifty meters off from the gate was an abandoned civilian house. I'll tell you why it's left empty like that. Sergeant Kim said in almost whispering voice, as if telling me a top secret. About four years ago, so that's even before I started the service. There lived an old couple and their twenty-year-old daughter. The daughter was not particularly beautiful, but being the only young woman near the base, she got lots of attention from soldiers. Her parents ran a small deer farm as well as earned small extra by providing service for soldiers. You know, like posting private letters or buying items that one could not buy from the PX in the base. Anyway. There was this one handsome soldier, and he and the young woman hit it off. The soldier was clearly just having fun. He already had at least two, three different girls occasionally coming to visit him. But the woman was madly in love with him. She got more and more anxious as his discharge date got closer. By then, she knew he didn't really love her, but she still couldn't let him go. The desperate woman chose to get pregnant by him, but all in vain. As soon as the guy finished the military service, he just ran away and cut all the contacts from her. The woman asked around soldiers and officers to find a way to find her man, but nobody knew any way better. She disappeared for a month, presumably in search for the guy. By the time she was back home, she was but half the woman she used to be, and wasn't in her right mind any more. It was about then I was stationed here, I guess. And then, here, sergeant made a little pause to swallow saliva. And then one night, the night watch at the gate saw the woman staring at them, standing straight between the cotton trees in front of her home. And she swayed gently in the wind. Did, did she hang herself then? I had to ask. Sergeant Kim seems to enjoy the effect his story was taking on me. He pushed his face up to mine and continued. Yes, but that was just the beginning. Ever since she died and her parents left the house, night watches at this gate reported that they saw the woman occasionally. You mean her ghost? Ghost or not, 
but she would appear still swaying between the cotton trees. One time a scared night watch shined the searchlight towards her, but then she was gone. Again, I couldn't resist asking him. And, uh, does she still appear to this day? I guess not. Isn't this the first time you heard about it all, no? Sergeant Kim said. So I thought there was that. Possibly an exaggerated rumor, I assumed. But everything changed into the rainy season that summer. The rule of my base was that one of the two watches had to stay outside the checkpoint regardless of rain, snow or cold. Naturally, the outside post was given to the junior soldier. One rainy night, Private First Class Chong and Corporal Che were out on the watch duty. Private Chong took the post out in the rain for about 20 minutes. Then, he came to the checkpoint and asked Corporal Che. Don't you hear something, Corporal? Shit, so it wasn't just me hearing that, was Corporal Che's reaction. It was a woman's voice. One moment sobbing, giggling the next, and sometimes unintelligible but sounding like asking them something. Two soldiers just stood there a while listening to the mystery voice. 50 meters to the front! 50 meters to the front! Suddenly Corporal Che mumbled. What is it, Corporal? Private Chung asked. Don't you see it yet? 50 meters to the front! shouted the Corporal Che and ran out of the checkpoint. Private Chong saw him load his rifle and followed him out. Because the base was right up to the border to North Korea, soldiers at watch posts carried live ammunition. Nevertheless, firing it without an absolutely justifiable reason would call for a lengthy scrutiny. Hands up! All us shoot! Corporal Che shouted, aiming the rifle. Indeed, Private Chong Tu saw a human figure in front of them, about 50 meters away. But how? The night vision was pitch dark, and raindrops obscure the vision. Private Chong lifted and aimed his rifle, following Corporal Che, but he was anxious. Corporal Che was clearly panicking, and the panic might make him do something foolish. Even at the army base up the north, one doesn't fire unless it's clear that it is the enemy or somebody clearly intending to attack. What if it was a civilian? I said hands up! I'm going to shoot! No, Corporal! When Corporal Che screamed with a ripping voice, Private Chong held on to Che's rifle to stop him. Hands off my rifle! Che shouted. To Chong's eyes, Che's wild, wide-opened glare was scarier than the mystery figure. No, Corporal, it might be a civilian. She's not even trespassing. Only then, Che seemed to calm down a bit. He lowered his rifle. Rain fell now heavier, and the figure of the woman wasn't there anymore in the rain. The story spread quickly around the base. The ghost was back. The officers warned the soldiers not to spread the nonsensical rumor. Remember the soldier's spirit, they said. But they didn't have to night watch at the gate. Every morning soldiers were anxious to find if it was their turn to keep the front gate post that night. But the next instant took place at another spot. The ammunition storage in the base was already a spooky spot to night watch as was. One couldn't see very far due to trees around from there. The front ground of the storage led to a little valley linked by a small wooden bridge and the backside led up to a public cemetery. It was a well-groomed modern cemetery, but still there was no denying that it added to the spookiness. 
Now, my base was short of hand more often than not because a large portion of soldiers were dispatched to other bases. So, apart from the front gate, all the other posts around the base, one soldier kept the watch for each. And one night, Corporal Park was watching the ammunition storage. He was considered a real man. Masculine and bold, he was appreciated by officers and fellow soldiers alike. But that night, the assistant orderly officer was shouting to none other than Corporal Park over the radio. Don't be a pussy and keep calm! He was so loud that the orderly officer woke up from his doze too. Why, what's up? he asked. This pussy is saying some nonsense, that somebody else is in the checkpoint, the assistant officer said. And just then, a shot was fired from the direction of the ammunition storage. Two officers sprinted towards the storage. Thanks to the moonlight, it didn't take them too long to find Corporal Park crouching down under the wooden bridge with his rifle aiming towards the storage. Orderly officer shined his torch towards Park and shouted, Did you just shoot? He saw Park slowly turning his head. His face was that of a panic. His eyes were so wide open that his eyeballs would pop out. Even after he was taken back to the office, Puck couldn't contain himself, all limp. What the heck was that? The assistant officer shouted, shaking Puck about. Puck barely lifted his face, wet with a tear and sweat, and said, I... I saw a ghost, sir. About 20 minutes into the one-hour watch duty in front of the ammunition storage, Corporal Buck heard a faint voice of a woman. He got out of the checkpoint and looked around. He couldn't see anything, but the voice was getting closer and closer. It's me! <laughs> voice said, and Park's hand moved almost reflexively to load his rifle. This must be that infamous ghost. Come on, you bitch! Park shouted. And as if taking his challenge, a whitish figure appeared on the hillside. Park went back to the checkpoint and radioed the orderly officer. There's, there's somebody near the ammunition storage! while the assistant officer calling him a pussy as a response. Puck froze, seeing a white face appearing right on the window of the checkpoint. He silently moved his right thumb to undo the safety lock of his rifle. The pale face was a reflection that meant the ghost was standing right behind him, inside a checkpoint. Puck always believed himself brave, but he couldn't quite bring himself to look back to confront the ghost face to face. He shot the rifle, ran out of the checkpoint, and hid himself under the bridge. The instant stirred soldiers in the base because it proved that the dreaded ghost could now appear anywhere. And soon, I myself became the subject of the terrifying encounter. That night, it really poured down like there was a hole in the sky. I, being the junior, had to stand outside the checkpoint in that rain. Above all else, it was loud. Heavy raindrops drumming down on my rain poncho, on trees and ground all around me. The rain also made it impossible to see anything clearly. At 2.20, and I remember the exact time because it was when I lifted my head after checking it on my wristwatch. I saw something 
hanging or floating between the cotton trees in front of the abandoned house. I didn't want to believe it was the ghost. I closed my eyes, waited, slowly counting ten in my mind, and opened again. It was still there. I tried it one more time. And still there. When it started moving and coming down, I took a deep breath and called out for my senior, not losing the sight of it. There was no reply. The checkpoint was just four or five meters away, but the heavy rain drowned my voice. I had to actually move to the checkpoint. Corporal Chong? Shit, you scared me. What is it? Corporal Chong said, turning around. I see something by the cotton tree over there, I said. He quickly put on his poncho and came out. But it was gone. Are you sure? It's too dark to see anything, Chong said. I'm sure. It looked like uh, some milky shadow. It moved too, coming down to the ground. Shit. It should be that ghost. Laughing bitch. Like a good senior, he told me just to keep my calm and stayed next to me together in the rain. But the moment of calm didn't last long. Among the sound of million raindrops drumming, at first I wasn't sure what that was. But soon it became clear that it was the sound of retching. Corporal Chang was hearing the same thing. That bitch! He spit it between his teeth, but couldn't hide a quiver in his voice. Human mind works in a funny way when in a desperate situation. I didn't want to accept it was the ghost, and went through all the other possibility until came up with a somewhat plausible alternative. Frog? What? Chong said. Isn't that a frog croaking? Chong looked at me for a few seconds, and agreed. Yeah, it could be. But the next moment, what about what you saw then? That that was a. Uh, uh, I had no answer for that. Come, let's go and check out. Are you sure? Perhaps it's better we radio the orderly officer. No way. Do you know who the orderly officer of the day is? Master Sergeant Kim, that mad dog. He'll shout that we are pussies and kick our sides. Frankly, I would have rather chosen to be grilled by the mad dog master sergeant than getting deeper into this situation. But knowing Corporal Chong's temper just as hot as that of the orderly officer, I had to agree with him. So, we slowly approached towards the sound of vomiting. Our torch didn't do anything, its light dispersed by raindrops. Nevertheless, the sound led us, now perhaps as close as ten or so meters. One thing was clear. It was no frog. It was a woman. My mind was telling me to stop, but my feet were keep taking the next step. Corporal Chong just loaded his rifle. He looked so tense that he could trigger a shot any moment. We still couldn't see anything among the bushes and tall grass, but Chong aimed at the sound nevertheless. Who's there? Come out with both hands up! He shouted. And the retching sound stopped. Go to the checkpoint and turn on the searchlight. Chong ordered. Night watches are allowed to use searchlight only when it's absolutely necessary. 
Every time it is turned on, the responsible watch had to note it down in the report with a clear reason. But in that moment, I couldn't consider any such things. Frankly, I was glad that I could get away from there. But I was wrong. When I opened the door to the checkpoint, there was somebody in. Just like a cliché ghost in TV shows, there was somebody with long jet black hair in a white dress. When her black eyes met mine, my legs gave in. I rather wished I had fainted at the point, but no, I, I remained lucid. But I couldn't move like cotton wool soaked in water. I couldn't even scream. Low gasp was all I could produce. Being a soldier, I didn't let go of my rifle, but it was in vain, as I could not even lift needle at the moment. What's taking you so long? Turn up the damn light! I heard the tongue shouting, but I could not respond. Soon I felt Chong's torch pointing at my side. What the heck are you doing? He shouted. It's it's in there. I could barely mutter. What? The bitch is in the checkpoint. Chong's torch light frantically shined to the checkpoint. What? What's there? Here's nothing. Chang shouted, slamming the checkpoint door. Next thing I felt was Chang's boot kicking my shoulder. Get up, you son of a bitch! Looked out like a wet sponge. I barely sat up, and the next Chang kicked my chest, knocking me down to the ground. It repeated several times, and the sheer physical pain shook me out of the paralysis. There's nothing, nothing. Seeing me finally standing up, Corporal Chong said between his panting, as more to convince himself than anything else. He then ran into the checkpoint and turned on the searchlight. It became as bright as daytime in about fifty meters radius. Corporal Chong ran to the bush where the retching sound came from, and I followed him. Come on, bitch! I'll kill you. Where the heck are you? Chong screamed, kicking the grass and smashing bush with his rifle. By the time he came out of the bush, after a good five minutes of screaming and running around, he was soaked wet, and his poncho was torn here and there. Let's go back. Chong, telling me in a low voice. Looked somehow even more chilling than just earlier. When we came back to the checkpoint, radio was buzzing. Corporal stopped for a second before he slowly walked in and picked it up. Apparently, the orderly officer was asking why the heck we switched on the searchlight. We were frankly worried if the orderly officer, who was known for his wild temper, would believe us. But seeing us in terrified and tattered state, he surprisingly let us finish our count. Go and rest. I'm going to report your count to the company commander. Was all he said to us at the end. Following day, we were indeed summoned to company commander's office. Though there was no conclusion or solution. His tone did change and didn't taunt us for lacking the soldiers' spirit, etc., as before. Corporal Chang became very quiet for the following days, unlike his usual self. He was seen chain smoking with a frowned face most of times. I was worried if he was depressed, and one day cautiously talked to him. Are you all right, Corporal Chang? After a long pause with just huffs of smokes, he finally said without looking at me, "That night, when you said the ghost was in the checkpoint." Yes. I did see her too. What? 
I did see her in there. Then why did you say you didn't see her? I asked. I saw the half-transparent whitish shadow floating inside. It wasn't a human, nothing I could even attempt to tackle. I was going mad with a scare, didn't know what to do, so I poured my anger onto you. I'm sorry, he said. Why didn't you report it to the officer or the commander? <laughs> Would they have believed me? Would they have thought that I was useless and unfit for my rank? So, I framed it all as your hallucination. I'm sorry. As always, rumors spread it around quickly, and the overall spirit and mood of the soldiers nosedived. And then towards the end of the rainy season, it was cloudy but dry, and the night shooting training went ahead as scheduled. Because of the inherent bigger danger than in the daytime, the company commander himself was present to supervise. It was when the first team finished target practice and the second team was entering that the commander shouted, STOP! Everybody who were in the view of the shooting targets instantly saw why the commander stopped the procedure. Behind the targets and where the wooded area started was a white shadow of a figure. It couldn't be a person. Not only the base was nowhere near civilian residence, but the target practice ground was double and triple secured to block any trespassers. On top of that, before the practice started, they ran a petrol round the ground to make sure there was nobody and made a loud announcement too. So... Unless it was some sort of mass hallucination or hysteria, almost the entire company saw it. The commander stared at it a while and then started talking to it. Hey, who is it there? His drill trained voice echoed around the ground, but the white shadow didn't respond or react. The commander suddenly darted towards it. The shadow disappeared into the woods and the commander followed in. We could only hear his ringing voice. Stop! Let's have a word. Why are you doing this to my soldiers? Come, talk to me! Then we heard... A scream so sharp that it could cut our skin. It was a low voice for a woman but definitely wasn't a man's voice. We were all frozen a while, until Commander reappeared from the woods and shouted, Oi, call in everybody other than those on watch duty now. Everybody bring their torch and rifle. We are going to catch her tonight. So, four platoons each took different routes to chase and close in, till we all ended up on the top of the mountain in the middle of the base an hour later. And just as I and most others thought, we couldn't catch her. Not even a trace of her. That night, the commander and other officers seemed to discussing into midnight. Everybody who saw the ghost was called in to give their account in detail once again, including myself. It took good one hour just to listen to everybody's story. It was only at the end of it that a non-commissioned officer who'd been working the base for five years finally mentioned about the young woman who killed herself for the broken heart. Company commander came to the base not quite two years ago and seemed that was the first time he heard the story. He asked others who served in the base longer to confirm if such really took place. After a long pause, he said, I've heard a lot of weird stories floating around the military bases, and I myself experienced some, but none of them were quite so disturbing as this one. I'm going to report it to the battalion commander. 
But what would that change? One of the officers asked. Well, we may need to perform some ritual to console the spirit, commander said. The battalion commander is a devout protestant. Would he ever agree? It's my job to persuade. Persuade he did, and in the end earned the permission to perform a ritual, if compromised to do it in Buddhistic manner rather than shamanic. In a matter of a few days, the entire company was summoned, save for essential workers. The battalion commander didn't attend, but he sent his car to bring in the abbot of the local Buddhist temple to lead the ritual. The old abbot looked gentle but firm. He explained to the soldiers gathered for the unusual occasion. Death is inevitable, but not all deaths are natural. After a sudden death by an accident or murder, Dying too young or with too much longing and grudge, a spirit is unable to move on but linger around us. Many of them do not realize that they are already dead and carry on waiting or doing what they couldn't finish in life, not knowing it's all in vain. These poor souls can turn resentful when they feel others are invading their space or get in their way. I was explained the sad story of the woman who is haunting the base. Today's ritual is to console the poor soul, help it let go of the grudge so that it can move on. It doesn't matter whatever your faith you have. If you are a Christian, do pray for her soul to be saved. If you are a Buddhist, do pray that she move on to the underworld. If you have no faith, to find a heart to wish she rest in peace at last. The ritual took place by the front gate, facing dead woman's old house. The abbot chanted to the rhythm of his wooden block, while soldiers prayed according to their own faith and religion. At the end of the half an hour ritual, abbot burnt the ritual plaque, and said. Dear young lady, what is the use of your longing? The love was not meant to be in this life. Let go of the longing, and you'll surely meet a love that you deserve in the next life. Let go of your sad heart, and find your peace in the underworld. Some of the soldiers seemed to get teary-eyed by the monk's gentle plea. The ghost had been hated and feared thus far, but finally we seemed to find a heart to sympathize with her. A woman who once was flesh, blood, and heart as we were. Gentle raindrops started to fall, like tears. That was it. The rest of summer was hot, but the soldiers regained their spirit, with their heart now lighter, having let go of fear, confusion, and tangled karma. Was the ghost real? Perhaps it was all in our heart. The story of the ghost quickly became any old ghost story that floats around any other military base. Within my time at the base. But whatever you think it was, I can at least attest it did happen. I was there. Hi, it's Anthony here, and thank you very much for listening. It was a bit of a struggle to record this story, as you might be able to hear. My voice is not currently in an optimal condition. The emotions are high, and there are too many different characters. Despite it all, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, give it a like and a comment, and please consider subscribing to my channel to help my tiny channel grow. 
If you'd support me more directly, I also have a Buy Me A Coffee account. The link's in the description. Buy Me A Coffee supporters enjoy an early access to my new video. Thank you. Until next Sunday, stay safe and take care.